our world and beyond. Space, in partnership with the European Space Agency. Look up at the night sky and you can see several thousand stars. Beyond them, lying hidden in the darkness, are billions more, fainter, more distant and deeply mysterious. One fundamental step to understand our universe is to understand our closer universe, which is the galaxy. To understand our galaxy, first we have to map it, and to do so, the European Space Agency is launching a satellite that can scan the sky with powerful new eyes. That satellite is called Gaia. The central, central goal of Gaia is the history of the galaxy, so the archaeology of our own Milky Way. To reach its goal, Gaia will create a detailed 3D map of the galaxy. It's something astronomy has never seen before. The precision on the position of the stars will be a lot higher than we can do from the ground, at least a thousand times higher. Astrophysicist Laurent Chemin is on a visit to the iconic observatory of the Pic du Midi. Perched on a Pyrenean peak, it has been a place of pilgrimage for stargazers for over a century. Today, the largest telescope here has a new role as a reference point for the Gaia space mission. Here there is an instrument that I use all the time, and this instrument is used to measure the speed of the stars compared to ourselves. And those observations that are made from the ground will allow us to calibrate and standardize the spectrograph, which splits light into different wavelengths, on board the Gaia mission. The observatory, at an altitude of 2,800 metres, is also a good place for us to get our bearings. So, where exactly are we in a galactic sense? So here we are on Earth, which is a very small planet on the scale of other planets in the solar system. And the solar system is in a spiral arm which rotates around the centre of the Milky Way. So as we are in the northern hemisphere, you can see the centre of the Milky Way in that direction, to the south. And it revolves around the centre of the galaxy at a speed of about 220 kilometres per second. And the Milky Way itself is around 2 million light-years from another galaxy called Andromeda, which is in this direction, more or less. And the two galaxies are moving towards each other at a relative speed of 100 kilometers per second. Working out the relative position, direction of travel and speed of the stars in our galaxy is one of the greatest challenges of astronomy. And it always has been. The science of cataloguing and mapping stars, known as astrometry, dates back to the dawn of civilization. People have been doing astrometry for a long time. The first to do so was Hipparchus, and he measured the position of around a thousand stars in the sky and the movement of those stars. These motions are very important. They hold Back in 1989, ESA paid tribute to that ancient Greek astronomer by launching a satellite named Hipparchos. It was a big step in astrometry, as it catalogued 100,000 stars. But Gaia promises a revolution, as it will observe, map and measure a grand total of one billion stars. 
The Gaia mission is going to be a huge leap in terms of precision, in terms of quantity of data observed and obtained and analyzed. And so it's really exciting to have such a big sample that will allow us to understand the sky and the formation of the Milky Way. To appreciate what Gaia can do for astronomy, you have to understand how it works. The European Space Agency satellite will carry the largest digital camera flown into space. Crafted here at Astrium in Toulouse, the satellite engineers had two watchwords, precision and stability. We are talking about stars which are 400,000 times fainter than we can see with naked eyes. And to do that, we have to build a huge focal plane. The focal plane is made up of a billion pixels. That's about a hundred times more than a standard camera that we might use for our own needs on Earth. The second challenge is to measure something with very, very high precision, and that is done by using a very new, innovative material, which is called silicon carbide. It's a combination of silicium and carbon, which is cooked at 3,000 degrees, and it becomes as stiff and as hard as diamond. Silicon carbide makes up the whole of the optical bench, that's to say the mirrors, the structure of the telescopes and the structure of the focal plane. Then, in order to have extreme precision, the satellite uses micro-thrusters, some of which you can see here. The satellite is equipped with eight micro-thrusters, which eject cold gas with a pressure of about one micro-newton. That's about a million times less powerful than a regular thruster. The world of astronomy is buzzing at the thought of a pinpoint accurate survey of a billion stars across the Milky Way. There's so much to learn. Gaia will help us measure the structure and the velocity of the stars in the most central part of the galaxy for the first time. The second aspect of the map of the Milky Way that Gaia will be able to observe is the whole neighborhood near our Sun, and we're going to be able to measure the shape of the spiral near the Sun for the first time. And with the satellite, we're also going to be able to measure the entire size of the disk of the Milky Way and measure the far periphery of the disk of the Milky Way. And that has never been done before. Gaia's galactic census covers 1 billion stars, equaling 1% of the 100 billion stars in the Milky Way. The huge stream of data should help astronomers solve some of the biggest puzzles in the field. Those include establishing the exact spiral shape of our galaxy and tracking dark matter, the hidden force that shapes our universe. One clear open question is um, how many arms our galaxy has. We do not know yet if we have two, three, four arms in our galaxy. Uh, the bar in the center of the galaxy, for instance, was not achievable by, by Parcos, but it is achievable in Gaia. So these kind of things um, are open questions that uh, could not be resolved by Parcos and can be resolved by, by Gaia itself. How did that matter is distributed on the space? And how if it is more concentrated towards the disk or in the halo or how it is distributed is something that we do not know. And mapping the precise motion of the stars in the disk, we can infer how this dark matter is distributed. This is quite important because the dark matter 
is much more abundant than the visible matter. And so basically, if that matter exists, it means that it drives the evolution of the universe. The science team will use Gaia's data to rewind history and see how our galaxy was formed and evolved. And they also harbor hopes that this 3D map of the galaxy will reveal much more. I can imagine what we can learn about what we already know. So we will have, uh, we already know things and we will know about more, with more precision. We can confirm or discard some of the theories, but I am more, I have more expectation for new ideas that will come that never, now we cannot imagine. Measuring the position of the stars is great. Measuring their distance is great too. And that's what Gaia will allow us to do. And when we know the individual position of each of those stars, we're going to be able to reconstruct the form, the shape of the disk of the Milky Way. We'll be able to see what it looks like. Is it typical? Does it look like the other galaxies that are around us? Gaia's map of the Milky Way will leave the night sky a little less mysterious but no less beautiful.